suppose you are told that the company shares are trading market price per share, we are given that 1.3 shillings for each share. That is the market price per share. We can use this information to determine the constant growth rate. Again, we can use the same data to determine the cost of equity under the Gordon's model. So the compounding method of determining the constant growth rate. Let us try to determine or to compute the growth rate from that information. And using the same information, we try to determine the cost of equity. Now, from what we have, G is n root, D n over D naught minus 1. In our case, we need to establish G equals n root D n over D naught minus 1. We said D naught. D naught is the DPS at the beginning of the investment period. Given these periods, the five years, since the first year dividend is paid at the end, and we only, this, we only have this as the first dividend, we can call it D naught, dividend at the beginning. This is 2.45. Then we say that D n, this is the dividend per share at the end of the investment period. The data in question provides DPS for five years. The last year is year five. So the DPS at the end of investment period is 2.98, 2.98. Now we need to get N. Given that this is the beginning and this is the end of the investment period, if the beginning here is period zero, we can say that from this period we have one, two, three, Four. So our period N is equal to four years. So how then can we get G? It is equal to N root, N is four, into DN 2.98 divided by 2.45 minus one. This will help us to determine the constant growth rate. So let us use our calculators to determine the constant growth rate G given the data uh, as above. So we can take 2.98 divided by 2.45 equals, that is 1.2163 and some other digits. We need to get the fourth root. So to get the fourth root, we take four, we press shift, we, put, uh, we press the power button, then answer equals. This will give us 1.05. We minus one, this will give us 0 0.05. Simply, we are saying that G is equal to 5%. The compounding method of determining the growth rate is given by G equals to N root. In our question, we've established N as four periods. One, two, three, four. DN divided at the end, 2.98. D naught dividends at the beginning of the investment period, 2.45. Using this data, we are able to get the constant growth rate per annum, G, which is equal to 5%. We say that under Gordon's model, the cost of equity KE is equal to D naught into 1 plus G over P naught minus plus G. We say that D naught 
as the dividend for the year just ended. Given period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The last year, which is year 5, the company paid a dividend per share of 2.95. Being the last year, we take it as the dividend for the period or year just ended. We therefore say that D naught for this purpose is equal to 2.98. Now, from the question, we have the market price per share and which is MPS, this is P naught. Our P naught is equal to that 1.3, meaning the shares are trading in the market at that 1.3 shillings. We have determined the growth rate G using the compounding method as 5%. So we say that G is 5%, which is 0.05. If we have this information, we can get KE. So therefore, KE is equal to Dividends for the year just ended, 2.98, multiplied by 1.05. <coughs> this one divided by the market price per share, that 1.3 plus 0 0.05. This will help us to determine the cost of equity using the Gordon's model for a constant or a normal growth firm. Let's see what the cost of equity is. 2.98 multiplied by 1.05 divided by that 1.3 equals plus 0 0.05. This gives 0 0.1499, which is equivalent to 0 0.14996. This is equivalent to 15%. In determining the cost of equity, we've talked of a number of methods. The last one is Gordon's model. The examiner will give you the data from such data, you determine the constant growth rate and using the constant growth rate and the market price together with the dividend for the year just ended, you will determine the cost of equity. In this topic, the cost of capital, today we've talked of the cost of capital and the factors to be considered or the components that are considered when establishing a cost of capital. We have started with the cost of equity and we've looked at the various methods that are used to determine the cost of equity. Next time when we meet, we will continue with this topic. We determine the various costs according to the syllabus, then from there we'll see how this area has been tested before. So for today, we, are, we will stop there. Once we meet next time, we'll continue and I believe you will have revised. Make sure that you continue revising because whatever we learn now will be used in the other areas of this topic. So we can stop there for today. I'd want to wish you all the best as you continue with your revision, as you continue with your study, and make sure that you always keep revising because of the many things that you are going to cover. God bless you. You have a nice time. Until we meet next time.